My name is Mark Donegan. I work for a video technology company called Beamer. And today I'm posing the question, can a four character technology save the video business? It's an interesting question because there's a paradox emerging in the video business where it feels like the best of times for many, but the worst of times for some. Here we have Disney announcing that they have already accrued $1 billion in losses and even before launching their direct to consumer business. And of course, there isn't a reporting interval that goes by where the cord cutting numbers haven't grown, which puts increasing pressure obviously on the video side of the service provider business. And yet Netflix stock is on the rise again, allowing the company to invest in content at levels that frankly just absolutely must bewilder their rivals. And we have Pluto TV selling for a mouthwatering $340 million in cash to Viacom, proving that the AVOD business model can be viable and quite valuable. So this is where I wanna connect with the massive investments being made in 5G and provide my perspective on why 5G may well break some video companies while at the same time make others. Let's look at AT&T. So in the last four years, AT&T has added $80 billion of additional debt to its balance sheet, leaving it with more than $160 billion of short and long-term debt. My point is not to break down the AT&T debt numbers, I'm not an analyst, but rather provide a perspective that the financial situation for AT&T going into its massive 5G investment cycle, while at the same time making known their strategic initiative to build up their video service capacity through Warner Media direct-to-consumer offerings like HBO and certainly DirecTV, is going to be challenged unless they do something very different with video. So what can a service provider like AT&T do to address the economic squeeze and the overall headwinds to the video business? This is the big question on many minds who are working in or analyzing the future of the video business. It is my strong belief that Ubiquitous, high-speed mobile networks powered by 5G will unleash a video tsunami of traffic on the network like we've never seen before. This is good news for the Pluto TVs of the world and other innovative video services like QB who will be able to reach more consumers with a better quality experience as a result of being able to leverage a faster network. But. It's bad news, in my mind, for network operators without a plan to monetize this additional traffic load. And of course, incumbents who were hoping to get by with incremental improvements to their services, such as switching from managed to unmanaged or OTT distribution, while continuing to use aging video standards like H.264 to deliver low resolution mobile profiles. Video distributors who continue to underserve their customer will quickly be at a disadvantage and ripe for disruption. From new business models such as AVOD and the newest and most efficient video technologies. Which brings me to the four character standard that I believe will play a key role in the success of the video business from this point forward. And that is HEVC, the video codec that is deployed today on 2 billion devices. There has been much written about HEVC royalty concerns, something that even triggered development of an alternative codec, which presumably is royalty free, However, while some in the industry have become preoccupied with these questions around licensing and royalties, major developments have been completed which went largely unnoticed. For example, HEVC Advance waived all royalties for digital distribution of content. This means HEVC encoded content that is streamed only carries a royalty for the hardware decoder, which is already covered by the receiving device. You do not have to pay any additional royalties, at least not to HEVC Advance. Now, if it's any comfort, the companies who have already done their due diligence on the royalty question, and of course I must say in no way am I giving out any legal advice or suggesting that I have any inside knowledge 
of their procedures for doing this uh, due diligence. I am merely reporting that these services today are streaming HEVC content to consumers, which tells me that they've determined that any concern of a massive HEVC royalty bill coming their way is minimal. And these companies include Amazon, Comcast, DirecTV, Dish Network, Netflix, Sky, Sony, Voodoo, Vodafone, Orange, just to name a few. But what about playback support? So this is a very good and important question and perhaps the area of development around the HEVC ecosystem that is least known or understood. Starting with home playback, if your customers have purchased a game console, TV, Roku box, Apple TV in the last two to three years, you are virtually guaranteed that it supports HEVC without any need for additional licensing or a player upgrade, which is great news. HEVC is now resident in almost every SOC that goes into any mid to high end CE video device. In fact, since 2015, industry reports show this group of products numbers around 400 million, 400 million devices that support HEVC natively. But what about the category that you really care about and that's likely mobile? So there's a data company called Scientia Mobile who maintains network device access profiles and they receive data from the largest wireless operators in the world. This company reports that 78% of all iOS smartphone requests come from devices that support hardware accelerated HEVC decoding. And for Android, it's 57% support HEVC decoding. These two numbers are, in my mind, where the picture of HEVC as the logical video standard to follow H.264 begins to take shape. So as you can see, we have major video distributors and tech companies who feel very comfortable encoding and distributing content in HEVC. And we have very large HEVC device penetration that um, really validates the idea that HEVC is a viable booster to the video business. Now, there's some additional factors, and that is that LiveView, a live streaming company, reported in their State of Live report that HEVC broadcast is growing, especially in the world of sports. And in fact, in case you thought maybe it was a passing trend, uh, the use of HEVC. In 2018, 25% of all live view generated traffic was streamed using the HEVC video standard. So what do these trends mean for the industry? They clearly show that we have an ever more demanding consumer who wants content that shows off the full capabilities of their viewing device which means higher resolutions and more advanced video standards like HDR. But the same user is now consuming more content, which is further congesting the network, a fact that is colliding with a shift from managed services to OTT or unmanaged. And this is creating some technical tension inside incumbent service operators who are facing technical shifts and business model fracturing. But amazingly, some are maintaining the status quo. And this is where the end of the story will be written for some as the best of times and for others as the worst of times. At Beamer, we believe that the proof of our product and technology excellence must be experienced and not just talked about, which is why we put together the best offer that we have seen in the industry where you can use our codex in combination with our VOD transcoder 100% for free. Just go to beamer.com forward slash free and in minutes you can put your hands on the best quality and highest performing software codec implementations anywhere. Well, thanks for watching and as always, thank you uh, for your attention and please tell me if you agree or disagree, if you have any additional perspectives to share, uh, I want to hear them.